Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we have a 2010 F-150 4x4 that the customer did a brake job on about a year ago and he's noticing a little bit of noise come from the left front here. He's not noticing, noticing a pull or anything like that, but he is noticing uh, excessive dust on the rim itself. Whereas the right side, not so much, it's just fine. So he asked me to check it out and sure enough, the caliper on here is sticking. Now, you're probably wondering how did I figure that out? Well, I don't have a video on that just yet, so we're gonna take care of that today. Now, the very first thing you wanna do is get the vehicle up on jack stands so we're nice and safe to work. We're gonna keep the wheel on though. Have a helper go ahead and press down the brake pedal a couple times and then release. Then you're gonna come down here, you're gonna grab that wheel and you're gonna try to spin it. You should be able to spin it no problem with all the leverage that wheel is giving you, okay? Now on 4x4 systems like this one, you're gonna have a drag of the drive line on there. But for about an inch or so back and forth, there's, there's gonna be the drive line lash, which is um, the, the lash inside the drive line that's gonna uh, be your free space where you can move it like a two wheel drive system. So keep that in mind. Now, if you don't know if that drag is, a, is the correct amount of drag for a 4x4 system or not, go to the other side, jack up that side, and do the same thing. You'll feel like on this one, I'm back and forth with a few fingers on there. This one, I got two hands on here, and I'm trying to make a move, and I can make a move, but I know it's sticking. So it's very obvious that it's sticking. Now, once you've verified there is a concern with the brake caliper dragging, you want to go ahead and take that wheel off. We now need to go in here a little bit further and do a little bit more investigating. The very first thing you want to do is check your overall brake condition on here. You want to check the caliper guide pins, to make sure they're nice and free in and out, it's top and bottom. And the same thing with your pads here. They should ride free in the, the bracket itself. So they're meant to slide in and out as the caliper compresses and decompresses in there. They should be able to move free. If anything is sticking in there, it's gonna hold it all together because the brake pressure is definitely more powerful than the release pressure on there. There's any kind of springs uh, that push them back or pull them back on the pads. It's not gonna be as powerful as the pressure that's compressing it, okay? So you wanna do a really good visual, and if you don't see anything, you wanna start pulling different components apart and see if there's anything sticking. Before that though, what you wanna do is a quick test on the back side of the caliper here. It's very easy, and it's gonna tell you if the caliper is a concern of any sorts, or is it further up the line. Okay, now we're gonna do the brake pressure and release test once again. So you want your helper up in the truck, hit the brake pedal a couple times, and then release. And then you're gonna come right down here, we're gonna verify, it doesn't move, it's sticking for sure. And we're gonna to go to the brake bleeder right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open that a couple turns, and if the fluid just shoots out of there, we know there's pressure built up in here and it's not able to release back through the line to the master cylinder. And that's gonna tell us it's a line issue going back up to the master cylinder. Now, if this thing just dribbles out of here, there's no problem, there's no built up pressure, yet you still can't move this thing. Guess what? It's in the caliper, okay? The caliper pistons are most likely stuck. It's very, very common on the trucks, the Super Duties, and the F-150s because of the excessive weight and the excessive heat, okay? So right now it's sticking. They just pressed in the brake. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open the brake bleeder. It's best to use line wrenches. Uh, a lot of times they're still standard nowadays, so usually have 5 16ths or 3 8 on here. So what you're going to do with, with it still sticking is you're going to go ahead and you're going to open it. might want to have some safety glasses on, and you're going to open it a couple of threads. Pretty quick, too. So right there, we're fully open. Any fluid that's in there can flow out, and you can see it's just dribbling out like it should. This tells me right now that the problem is inside the caliper, okay? That's how quick it can be to decipher which is which on here. Now, the other thing to look out for, let me tighten this real quick. I don't need fluid over the ground. The other thing to look out for, and that I always warn in my brake uh, repair videos, is watch this line, this flexible brake hose that comes down from the lines, the hard lines on the vehicle in the frame, okay? This one was actually coming down and twisted. 
They pulled it off to do a brake hub. They did brakes on here and, and stuff like that. And they hung it up, okay? And then they put it back down here and they couldn't get it on there just right. So they moved it a little bit more and they put it on. They got it on, they screwed it on. Down the road he goes. Guess what? This line was twisted like a freaking pretzel, okay? That's gonna cause issues too. And that can cause damage to the hose also. Okay, so these are all good points, all good points to check, I guess you could say, uh, whenever you have this kind of concern. Now, on this one right here, the next thing I did is I pulled off these bolts right here. These bolts bolt to the guide pins, okay? Now, once you loosen these, you're going to know if these things are moving back and forth right there. And at that point, uh, they're both out, flip it up out of the way we can start checking the pads to make sure they're moving in the bracket. If everything checks out okay, then you know it's in the pistons, in the caliper itself, and they're just done for. Don't bother trying to uh, fix them. Go out, buy a reman unit that's done by a, a good manufacturer, and a lot of times they're pretty darn cheap and they use the Ford cores. You'll see Ford Motor Company all over the cores, okay? So they're using the Ford housings and new seals and pistons. So they're not too bad even from the aftermarket. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I sure enjoy sharing this knowledge with you guys. Uh, I really think this is going to help a lot of you out there fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you next time, guys.